Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Xinya Zhao and I'm a PhD student from the Ohio State University. Today, I'm very happy to present our work, Malicious Relay Detection and Legitimate Channel Recovery. This work is collaborated with my lab mate, well, Wei Han Chen, and our advisor, Professor Kenneth Srinivasan. Uh, so first, let's start from background. As we know that uh, wireless channels can uh, vary fast over space, so usually for devices placed more than half wavelengths, which is really a very short distance away, we say that their channels can be considered as uncorrelated. So this feature makes wireless channels an ideal source for some physical layer security applications. Example security applications include shared secret generation protocols and source authentication protocols. Uh, in a secret generation protocol, two parties, like Alice and Bob in this figure, want to get a shared secret. Since channels from Alice to Bob and Bob to Alice are supposed to be almost identical because of the channel reciprocity, these two parties can take their channel measurements as inputs and run the same secret generation algorithm. If this algorithm is designed with a certain level of tolerance for the noise, these two parties can get the same output secret without uh, any communication between each other. The, generation, uh, the generated secret is hard for a malicious third party like Eve to predict because Eve's channel to both users are supposed to be uncorrelated from the Alice to Bob channels. And another example is uh, source authentication protocols. In a source authentication protocol, one party Bob wants to know whether a received packet is from the legitimate transmitter Alice or not. With wireless channels as a feature, Bob can mirror the channel of this new packet, compare the channel with the previously collected sig channel signatures, and only accept this packet if the new channel is close to the signatures. If this packet is from Eve, then this packet is very likely to be rejected since the channel from Eve can be very different from the channel of, from Alice. Uh, recently, we say that uh, the full duplex relay devices have been applied to several types in compromising link based security protocols, including the secret generation protocols and the link based source authentication protocols we have just introduced. A full duplex device it can transmit and receive signals simultaneously at the same frequency band. When such a device is used as a relay, then it can retransmit the signal it just received almost simultaneously at the same frequency. This figure shows a general attack model with a malicious full duplex relay. To manipulate the receiver's channel measurements, H prime, the attacker can show the full duplex relay device in the same environment as the transmitter and the receiver. When the relay is active, the receiver will receive signals uh, not only from the transmitter, but also from the relay, and the relayed signal will affect the channel measurements with an additional injected channel, as highlighted in red in the figure. If the attacker can query the channels from the transmitter and the receiver to itself, uh, which are the HTA and HAR in the figure, the attacker can be fully aware of the injected channel values. The attacker can also control how much channel is injected by adjusting the release amplification level W. If W is said to be uh, large enough, say that the injected channel can even dominate H prime. So after the channel injection, the attacker can then compromise the, say, the shared secret generation protocols by estimating the secret uh, with the dominating injected channel or they try to bypass the source authentication protocols by later sending some forged packets with injected channels as features. Uh, it's worth to notice that in both reference attack works, uh, the power of the injected channel needs to be large enough to perform those attacks. The authors have also mentioned that the attacker can increase the amplification level gradually to avoid being detected because of the sudden changes in channel values or the received signal powers.
Uh, and we believe that the above the tech model based on malicious full duplex relays are hard to detect with existing methods. Two lines of works are closely related to our target attacks. The first one is a physical layer source authentication protocols, which extract features either based on channels or hardware imperfections from the received signals and compare the features with previously collected signatures. We believe that uh, their dependence on clean ground truth signatures can limit their applications. What's more, the attacker can perform gradual channel injections to bypass some authentication protocols, especially those that need to update their signatures periodically. The other line of work is uh, distance bounding based protocols, which is well known for their effectiveness against relay attacks. The distance bounding uh, these protocols detect relay attacks by estimating the distance between the transmitter and the receiver based on the delay time. If the estimated distance is greater than the communication range limit, a relay is likely to be there and cause the communication range increase. Uh, however, we also don't think that the distance bounding method can detect our targeted attacks because the transmitter and the receiver are still within the communication range of each other when the attack is happening. So uh, in this work, our goal is to first propose a detection method for full duplex relay attackers without relying on any signatures. Uh, what's more, we say when such an attacker is detected, we might still need to run some applications with channels as inputs such as the security protocols or some other systems like sensing systems. So our second goal is to recover the legitimate transmitter to receiver channels from the channels manipulated by the malicious full duplex relay. And our system is proposed based on the uh, expected difference in the delay time and power loss between signals from the legitimate transmitter and through the malicious relay. To better analyze the signal, we first estimate the signal path parameters from channel observations. For received signals at a certain frequency, we can see them as the sum of multiple delayed copies of the original transmitted signals through multiple signal paths. So we can formulate the channel values with this equation where each signal path is characterized by its attenuation parameter A, its traveling distance D, and the phase distortion phi. With channel observations at multiple frequencies, we can estimate the, path, uh, the parameters for each path. Uh, compared to the legit signals, relayed signals tend to have a longer delay time caused by the uh, relay's processing time, which is really a few sample durations and also a higher power to make the injected part dominate the channel for successful attacks. The longer delay and higher power will be interpreted by the channel model as a longer traveling distance and a larger attenuation parameter. For signals from the legit source with its transmit power as a prior knowledge, we can derive an upper bound of their attenuation parameters A based on the traveling distances D as shown in the, uh, by the dashed lines in the two figures. Attenuation parameters of paths through the relay are very likely to exist this upper bound, and this gives us a chance to detect the relay and further recover the legit signals, uh, uh, the legit channels after uh, excluding the abnormal paths. So uh, based on this insights, we propose our system relay shield which is a system that detects full duplex relay attackers and recovers legitimate channels from those manipulated by the relays. Relay shells consist of a relay detection module and a channel recovery module. The input channel measurement is first sent to the relay detection module. If no attacker is detected, the channel can then be directly used for the applications that takes channel as inputs. Uh, if an attacker is detected, then the channel can be further sent to the channel recovery module first, and the recovered output channel is then sent to the applications. Uh, we will first uh, introduce the relay detection module. 
The relay detection module runs for every input channel, so we really want its runtime to be as short as possible. Although we prove the feasibility by uh, resolving signal paths from the channels, uh, we have observed that uh, for this uh, detection task, using neural networks can provide comparable accuracies as the signal path method. So we choose to use neural networks in our system to accelerate this process. To accommodate the input format of neural networks in the implementation, we separate the real and imaginary parts of the complex channel values and assemble them to a real number array as shown in this figure. The real number array is then sent to a fully collected neural network model to produce a binary number representing the existence of an attacker. And uh, in the channel recovery module, we first resolve the signal pass components from, with an optimization problem. To reduce the search space and runtime for this optimization, we apply again a neural network model to produce the initial values of the traveling distances. After the optimization problem is solved with these initial values, we reconstruct the channel with multipath components, which are believed to be from the transmitter. Uh, and in both modules, we have applied neural networks to accelerate the system. We use simulated channels to train the neural network models. To generate the simulated channels, we first generate random signal path parameters and then calculate the channel values with them. For channels uh, from the transmitter, uh, since we have, uh, we have derived a constraint about uh, its attenuation parameters with the transmit power as a prior knowledge, we, so we limit the range of the attenuation parameters when we generate the random values. We believe that uh, compared with using real-world channels collected in a limited number of environments, using simulated channels can make our trained models more general and more robust to environment changes. So uh, next we will introduce our evaluation settings and results. For most of the evaluations, we use totally 80 channels of which 30 are collected from a typical home environment and 50 are collected from a typical office environment. Uh, those channels are mirrored from a 02.11n uh, packets at 2.4 gigahertz band 11. Each channel contains values of 52 uh, data subcarriers. The neural network models in both, uh, in both modules are fully connected neural networks with 10 hidden layers and 100 neurons each layer. They are trained with 200,000 channels with two to four signal paths in each channel. And first we evaluate the uh, detection accuracies in different relay settings. We notice that the signal power received from the relay and the delay time of the relay signals are the two parameters that affect system performance the most. So we consider how the detection accuracies change with these two parameters. And to better measure the signal power, we use the received power ratio, which means the ratio of the received signal streams RSS from the relay versus that from the transmitter. Here, the left figure shows the detection performance changes with uh, different relay power ratios and a fixed three-type delay time. The right figure shows the detection performance with different delay times when the received power ratio is fixed at 0 dB. So from the figures, we can say that the detection accuracy increases as the relay signal gets stronger and the delay time gets longer. And next, we evaluate how the received power ratio affects the channel recovery results. Here we define the term uh, CSI difference to be the average difference of normalized channel state information, CSI, per subcarrier between the mixed or recovered channels and the ground truth transmitter to receiver channels. Uh, the smaller this value is, the more similar the considered channel is to the ground truth channel. And in the red figure, the RSS ratio is the ratio of the mixed or recover, recover channel power and the ground truth. 
uh, a zero dB RSS ratio means that the power is identical to the ground truth. And from these two figures, we can see that uh, when the received power ratio is less than zero dB, the recovery performance is quite stable. When more uh, and when more signal is injected, we observe larger error in uh, signal path estimation, and this larger error leads to a slight downgrade in the recovery performance. However, the recovery channels are still, are still much closer to the ground truth compared with the manipulated mixed channels. And next, we evaluate the recovery performance with varying delay times. The results are shown in these two figures. We can see that the recovery performance gets better as the delay time increases. This is because the longer this delay time is, the path parameters of the signals from the transmitter and the relay will be more distant, especially the traveling distances. We have observed that uh, the, distance the distant parameters can help resolve paths more accurately. And we also run a system test to see how our system works in a dynamic environment during the gradual channel injections. Uh, for this system test, we run the experiment for six hours. The injection happens in three phases. In the very first hour, the attacker is off, and so there is no injection at all. Then in the next four hours, the attacker slowly increases its amplification level from zero until when the received powers from the relay and the transmitter are equivalent as a receiver. Then in the very last hour, the attacker sticks to this amplification setting that gives a zero dB RSS ratio. The leftmost figure shows the detection results. Also, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the leftmost figure is the detection results. And uh, we can see that our detection module can capture the relay attacker when the received power from the relay is more than 10 dB lower than that from the transmitter. As the relay increases its power, the mm -hmm. Detection module sends the alerts more frequently, and the results stay at detected when the received power is when the received power ratio is around negative six dB. The blue line is a result of a representative link link based authentication protocol, and we can see that it cannot really capture the gradual injections. The other three figures shows the channel recovery results in the CSI difference. RSS ratio and the absolute RSS values. We can see that uh, most recovered channels are closer to the ground truth than the unrecovered mixed channels. And last, we test the runtime of our system and see how it changes with the signal pass numbers. The left, no the left figure shows the runtime of the relay detection module, and it doesn't change, it doesn't uh, increase with the signal pass numbers because the runtime of neural networks is mostly decided by the network structures, but not the input values. The runtime is less than one millisecond in our test environment, which makes it practical for real-time processing. And the red figure shows the runtime of the channel recovery module. Its execution time increases significantly with the number of signal paths, and this is mostly caused by the increased number of variables in the optimization step. Uh, we believe that the recovery module can be implemented with the uh, linked-based applications in the devices with more computing powers. So uh, to summarize our work, first we propose relay shout, a system that detects duplex relay attackers and recovers channels that mm -hmm. have been manipulated by the relays. And by resolving signal pass information from observed channels, Relay Shield is able to accurately detect relays and recover original channels independent from any previously collected signatures. Uh, thus, our extensive evaluations prove that our, uh, the, both the relay detection and the channel recovery modules are effective. Um, that's all. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Um, I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you. Questions for our speaker? 
Uh, Xinghua, I, uh, I actually do have a question. Um, so one of the more significant attacks against cellular networks in the past few years um, it came uh, from a paper called uh, Alter a few years ago. And the, the basic idea was that you could set up a fake base station as a relay um, and the attack essentially worked at layer layers two up. Um, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on if your work could actually apply in, in that particular setting. Oh, well, first, I, I haven't really read the paper you have mentioned. I'm sorry. So if you say that um, for, the, so for the attack proposed in that work is for a uh, layer two or above, so I believe that's uh, at least a Mac layer. So it might be not directly related to our work because our uh, proposed defense is mostly based on uh, the layer one, the physical layer uh, signals. Uh, so, uh, but if so, if there is a base station acting as a relay. I mean, even though if the attack can be layer two or above, but for the layer one, in layer one, we say if we can capture the signals, um, I think if it's not really a full duplex relay, say so half duplex, then maybe we can just directly check the delay time of the of the signal and uh, say whether there is a relay or not. And if it's a full duplex one, I, I believe, uh, Method, our method, or a uh, similar method that uh, detects a relay or recover the check channel by analyzing the signal path should be able to apply to such an attack. Okay, um, that's. Uh... But again, I I haven't really checked that attack paper, so it's just my mm, my answer based on my current understanding. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we'll continue this conversation offline. <laughs>